week. I said, we're going to sing to God be the glory. Amen? Amen. That sounded a little bit better. Man, I thought we'd turn Catholic there for a moment or something. All righty. To God be the glory. I'm 162. Amen, Miss Ruth. I'll just blame it on him, okay? What I every tie every mess up, just blame it on him. Yeah, okay. Oh, for a shame. All right, well, let's open with prayer, right? And then we'll get to it, all right? Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone that made it uh, possible for them to be here. Lord, I thank you for their faithfulness. Lord, as we Open the service up, Lord. I pray that you'll speak to all of us, Lord, for the song service and for the preaching. For in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Get to the prayer bulletin. It's been a while since I've done this on Wednesday night. And uh, my song leader didn't put me a, any kind of a program up here. So, all right. Yeah, that's okay. All right, well, uh, let's look at our prayer bulletins. We see, uh, don't forget, uh, Patty Bailey and uh, Brother Lee. Both of them need uh, some work in organs. Uh, Joe Bailey, uh, the Medrino family. Uh, Gwen Cook. Uh, Bobby Pierce. Uh, uh, Brother Bill and Miss Frankie. Uh, Brother J. L. Wilburn. Kyle McGee. Uh, Bill Rafferty. Joan Bosark. And uh, all of our ministries, uh, uh, 
come, that we see on the right hand side, soul winning, unspoken uh, Wednesday night, and our revival, personal church in America. And America, don't forget our spring revival starts this Sunday. Again, this Sunday our spring revival starts. You do not want to miss it. All right? But if you have to work, I understand. Uh, I will come and bug you at work. Uh, Garth Road Baptist Church, all of the ministries, are you, uh, the school, Sunday school, jail, nursing home, our government, military. And our missionaries of the week are Brother Glenn and Sandra Border, the Jewish uh, missions. They are retired, but praise the Lord that they uh, were their missionaries, right? All right, we're going to start over here. Oh, no one in the far. So, anyone in uh, this my middle right section? Yeah, Brother Kurt. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, please put on your prayer list. Uh, my wife Shizu. Thankfully, she's starting to get better. Uh, her pain's gone down to nothing. She's still very, very sensitive to uh, light and sound. Uh, but let's see what's it? 15, 16, this is day 18 of this migraine. So, uh, please continue to pray for her. Uh, pray for my friend at work, uh, Rolando. Uh, for salvation, and uh, also for Steve, the gentleman who's in the car wreck. Still haven't heard anything back on him on what's going on there. All right. Anyone else here? All right. What about in the next section? All right. Far left. Miss Brenda. Seven. Um, on the thirtieth, I go in for my procedure for my shoulder. I pray everything goes well, and I've gotten a opportunity to go run a new store. I'm just hoping everything is in God's will, and things work out the way that they should. Right. Brenda? I see prayers for Tanya Peoples. Um, she did go to a doctor today, and she has cysts on the other side of her ovaries also. Now, and um, pretty much they don't want to do hysterectomy because she's so young. And she's just a good and good so hysterectomy. Okay. Tanya, people. All right. Anyone else over here? Brother Lee? Yes, uh, Norma and Lala Wilson. Keep them on the prayer list. And also my sister Carol has surgery on April 13th. Sorry, this is a Facebook friend of mine. She has a daughter named Brooke, and she has, she's about six to eight years old. And she's been having very serious stomach issues where she has not been able to keep anything down. And uh, they've done procedures on the days, and hopefully that she, can, she can't even keep down. That's it. I'm just mad. All right, don't forget to be praying as we lead up to the spring revival. Ask God to speak to you in a very uh, individual way. And something that God may want to change or work on you about or he's been speaking to you about. So be sure and pray. And not only for that, but also for Brother Sam uh, that he uh, you know, will be up here and he will uh, give us the word that God has uh, for us to hear. All right. Anyone else? All right, Brother Kurt. Quick praise and a prayer request for my grandmother, a southern plumber. Um, again, she'll be 95 and just a few weeks away. And she had a um, pacemaker put into her chest, and she's doing very well. The doctors are happy, and she's happy. Um, she's actually in skilled nursing for recovery, and she should be home by the end of the week. When I say home, I mean you know, here on Earth or house. Um, I'm not talking about Mm-hmm. Um, so she's doing really well. Uh, but continued prayers for her quick healing. Anytime you have a surgery on chest and heart, that's not mine. But so she is doing well. Good. Hi, Brother Kurt. My dear Lord and God, thank you for this time we have together today. Thank you for this week you've given us so far. Um, 
I've been blessed through this week, and I know that everybody else here has too, my Lord. But I also know it's been a stressful week, and I'm thankful for the opportunity just to stop and come into your house and, and just uh, feel your Holy Spirit move, my Lord. I ask that you please uh, be with us today. Please open our hearts and our minds to hear your word that you have given Brother Mark to present tonight. Uh, please fill him full of Holy Spirit and give him the truth. Uh, Lord, I do pray that he speaks only what you'd have him to, but he speaks everything that you'd have him to, my Lord. And uh, I pray each word uh, make an impact on us in whatever way that each one of us needs, Lord, not only here in this auditorium, but uh, across the Internet as well as people are watching. Lord, uh, you've heard the names that we've called out. I want to lift them up to you again. Uh, you know each situation. I ask you please help them in each way that they need. And, uh, Lord, I, I pray you take care of each one. Uh, Little to Miss Patty, Joey, Miss Heather, the Madrano family, Wynn Cook, uh, Tanya, Brother Lee, uh, Bobby Pierce, uh, Brother Bill and Miss Frankie, Norma and Lala, Carol, uh, Brother J.L., Kyle, Little Brooklyn, Bill Rafferty, Joan Bozart, uh, Miss Evelyn Plummer, my wife Shizu, my friend Rolando, and my friend Steve, my Lord God. I ask you please touch each one of these folks. Uh, a lot of healing was asked for. I ask you please heal them. But Lord, some of these folks need salvation too, and I ask you please uh, touch their hearts, touch their minds, open them up, my Lord God, to receive your truth and, and break their heart towards you. Take the blinders from their eyes, please, Lord, and, and show yourself to them. I do lift up to you our nation. I ask, my Lord God, that you please uh, grant our uh, duly elected representatives the wisdom to uh, put into place the laws that should be to enact, to uh, enforce the laws as they should be enforced and to judge righteously, Lord, whether it be at the uh, national level, the state level, the city or county or whatever, Lord. I pray that our representatives uh, do their job properly. You please grant them great wisdom, Lord, and I pray that you please bring each and every one of them to a saving knowledge of Christ Jesus. I lift up to you, our men and women uh, in the military and in uniform protecting us here and abroad, Lord, on our streets, uh, on our borders, and across the world defending uh our nation, my Lord, and I ask that you please uh, touch each one, that uh, you please protect them, my Lord God, that you please grant them wisdom in their jobs, and Lord, I pray that uh, you please bring each and every one of them to a saving knowledge of Christ Jesus, that you encourage your children that are among them uh, to uh, to speak out, to give them that wisdom and that full filling of the Holy Spirit to if, uh, have an effect on those that they work with, my Lord God. I lift up to you our spring revival. I ask you please give Brother Sam the words that we need to hear, and please, my Lord God, fill him full of the Holy Spirit to make an impact on us. We need your touch, uh, Lord God. It, it's wonderful to be here under the steady preaching of Pastor and uh, Brother Mark and our Sunday school classes and all that. But sometimes, Lord God, we need uh, just somebody else to come in from the outside and kind of stir us up, hit us with exactly the same things we hear day in and day out every week here, but hit it from a different angle, Lord, that kind of throws a light on things, just like you open a different window, and all of a sudden things look a little bit clearer. I pray, my Lord, you please fill Brother Sam full of the Holy Spirit, and please fill each one of us full of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we receive your truth as it is, and uh, that uh, we repent of our sins on that and repent of our not following you, and decide to take up the cross that you have given us that you will give us during this uh, spring revival and that we move on uh, in your will, my Lord, and in your word. I ask you also, please give us somebody to uh, to ask, to come here, to, to invite, and that, my Lord God, that uh, you please move amongst our community, not just in our lives, my Lord God, but among Baytown uh, and uh, Highlands and Crosby and everywhere around us, Lord. We need your Holy Spirit down upon us. We need your power. We need uh, your, you to change us into your image, Lord, because we are not uh, a holy and righteous area, Lord, and we are not a holy and righteous nation. So we need you to please, Lord, uh, do something here. I do lift up our church to you, my Lord. I ask that you please uh, touch all of, <clears throat> all of our ministries. Please give those who work in these ministries the wisdom and the strength and the boldness to uh, go and do as they need to do. And I pray you please give us workers for these ministries as well. Uh, and, my Lord God, the financial support to keep them going. Uh, I also ask that you, uh, I know that every person here has an unspoken or more than one unspoken request. And I ask you please touch every, each heart and mind. 
uh, each life, my Lord God, help us with those things that uh, we, we present to you uh, privately and quietly, uh, maybe among our families, but not here amongst the congregation, but you hear still, my Lord. And I ask you, please take care of each and every one of those. I do lift up to you, uh, Brother Glenn and Miss Sandra, that you uh, please continue to bless the work that they're doing in their lives. I know you still have something for them to do, Lord, because they're still here on this earth. So I thank you for what they have done, and I ask you to please continue to encourage them uh, in what you've got for them to do. Again, Lord, I ask you to please fill each one of us for the Holy Spirit. Give us ears to hear and a heart receptive to your truth. And fill Brother Mark for the Holy Spirit so that uh, your will will be done among us, my Lord, in, in our lives. In the, in the precious name of Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. Go ahead and grab that hymn. Turn to him number 19. And once you find it, you can go ahead and stand up, and the men will come forward with the last verse. You know, I don't know if y'all heard, but uh, White Host Baptist Academy had their first track meet of the year yesterday. And you know, I may have been misinformed, but what I was told is that of the whole team, they only brought home one ribbon um, last night. But that's great. It's the first track meet. And I have to brag, it was Texas who brought home the ribbon. And I'm thinking, wait, this is a track meet. I didn't know they had a running of the mouth competition. I don't know where she gets it from, though. That's right. Oh. Anyway, we're going to stand and sing hymn number 9797, I Need Thee Every Hour. My question is how many of the girls had ribbons when they went there and only one of them came back with theirs. That's that's not very good stewardship in my opinion. <laughs> I like that. Uh, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I'm sorry, chapter 10, wrong page. Uh, verses 3 through 5, the word of God says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the war, war <clears throat> try that again. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the planting down, or for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I was kind of hoping Brother Tim was going to be here tonight, because uh, I'm going to pick on him a little bit, not really picking on him, but a situation happened with him, and I don't think he'll mind me me telling uh if y'all are on facebook with him y'all might have seen it he posted a meme out there that uh said um ghosts are not dead people uh they are 
uh, demons come to deceive. And I agree with that. Biblically, there is no such thing as a dead person walking on the earth. But Satan is walking around like a lion seeking whom he may devour. Well, apparently there are some people on Brother Tim's uh, Facebook page who really do not appreciate this truth. Uh, I saw it yesterday. I did not. I did not go back and look at it today, uh, but I applaud Tim for putting the truth out there, probably knowing that those people were not going to be happy. Uh, and, and he was very nice. I don't know who the lady was who really threw a rant out there, but her her verse that she pulled from the Bible out of context to try and disprove that was that he, she said hell was empty because. Uh, or that nobody was in hell right now because it wasn't their time, First Corinthians, time to be judged, First Corinthians something. Uh, I don't remember. But then she goes on her rant about how uh, ghosts are actually people who decided not to move on and they have chosen to be on this world. And, and I'm like, where is that in the Bible? I mean, we can debate First Corinthians whatever, but you haven't had any proof for what you're saying. But I looked at that, and, I, and, and Tim just said something like, oh, really? I did not know that. Right? Very nice. And I thought, if Tim's reacting that way, because he's usually really good at saying, well, you know, here's what the Bible says. So this must be a person who has their imagination darkened. They're believing fables. It is our job as we go out into the world to present the truth. And not everybody is going to want to hear it. In fact, most people aren't going to want to hear it. But that's okay. It's not our job to convince people. It's our job to tell them. So as we receive the offering tonight, I'm going to tell you the truth. God says, it's robbing from him if you don't tithe and give offerings. And give offerings. Now, don't get mad at me. Or you can if you want to. I don't care. But that's what God says. So as we receive the offering tonight, be thankful that you have something from which to return 10% to the Lord. Because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. As Brother Richard Priest with these in prayer. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this evening. Thank you once again for this beautiful and thing we were able to accomplish. Lord, let us bear that song that was sung last year. We need the every hour of the day, not just on Sunday. Lord, we ask you now to be with this people who are going to be up with a terrorist Lord, just watch over them and their families, Lord, and lift them up to some of We just ask you now, Lord, to be with us here in life, Lord, and with our throat Baptist Church, Lord, that we can reach out there and Thank you, Miss Ruth. All right, if you would, turn in your Bibles and please stand to Nehemiah chapter number 6. Nehemiah chapter number 6. Usually we would be in at 1 Timothy, but uh, uh, this week uh, I believe the Lord has uh, moved me to preach on Nehemiah chapter 6 as we are getting ready for this free revival. 
Nehemiah chapter number 6. I know, uh, I don't know if you pay attention much to the news. I try not to because uh, it raises my blood pressure when I watch the news. But, I, you know, I, I didn't pay attention much when uh, uh, Bush was president. And uh, I should have, but I was, you know, I was just right out of high school, all I they really didn't care about politics, and so. But I, I know that one thing that he will be known for is that he protected America, and uh, and I believe we have a president now that wants to protect America. And uh, there are some who don't want to protect America, and they are doing everything they can to stop things uh, this president from it. And uh, I thought about that today. And the reason I say this is because when in Nehemiah chapter 6 is, you know, in Nehemiah he's trying to build a wall to protect Jerusalem, right? And uh, I think about our, you know, uh, I put that in a lot of our pastor. He preaches our, the word every single opportunity he gets to protect us, right? Because he's preaching the truth. The truth is what's going to protect us. And, and there are, and some of us, we... We don't let him talk, uh, speak to us. We'll come to church and we'll sit down and we'll be seen, but we don't change. And we don't let the Word of God to, uh, to penetrate our heart, into our heart and into our mind. And so, But as we look at Nehemiah here, let's see what he has to say. And now that you've found Nehemiah chapter 6, let's look in verse 1. It says, Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. That Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it to come and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them uh, after the same manner. Then sent Samballot his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time, and an open letter in his hand. And when it was written, it is reported among the heathen, and Geshmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel. For which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king according to these words. And thou hast, had, hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee in Jerusalem, saying that there is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Then I sent unto him, saying, There is no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work that it be not done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Father, uh, come before thee uh, once again, Lord, and asking you to help me tonight. Father, I ask that you would empty me of myself, my sin. Father, fill me with thine Holy Ghost that I may preach of thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, I pray that we would set aside anything that is buying for our time, or that we may glean from your word. Lord, I will be sure to give you all the honor and glory for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. That's the blessing of the reading of his word. I want to talk to you on the subject of strengthen, strengthen my hands. Strengthen my hands. Nehemiah, a servant of the Lord. He, you know, one thing, uh, when we set out to do something, especially when it's here uh, at the church or whether we're doing it for the Lord, that the enemy hears about it. He's going to hear about it because he has he has powers that you know talks about in Ephesians 
about rules and powers and those who have uh, princes and things of that nature that go about trying to disrupt us. And when we start to do something like the spring revival coming up in just a few days, four, about four days or so, he's going to do everything he can to stop it. If he can't stop it, he's going to do everything he can to keep you from coming. I promise that will happen. I promise. Well, something happened at work and I had to... He will try his very best to keep you from doing uh, the work of the Lord. And here we have Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem wanting to stop Nehemiah. They wanted to stop Nehemiah. The, ne the, the enemies heard uh, that the wall was built. Then they heard that there was no breach. And he says in verse 1, uh, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. You know, uh, the gates are very important. They help protect the city that's within, right? They're part of the wall. And just like you and I, if, if we don't have that wall set about our hearts, we leave a gate open, then we're get, allowing Satan to get a foothold or a stronghold into that wall and able to get in. And so we know that the enemies here did not want them to finish the wall. And we see here that not only that the, the enemies heard, but Nehemiah. You know something about Nehemiah? When Nehemiah says he's going to do something, he does it. You know, he, he, he not only talks the talk, but he walks the walk. You know, and there's something about a servant of the Lord that says, you know, I'm going to do this, and they do it. You know, we, I don't know if you know this, but we have, live in a society of folks who do not want to come through. Well, they'll say they're going to do something, and then they don't. That ought not be said of the servants of the Lord. When I mean a servant of the Lord, I mean a Christian. Because we're supposed to be honest. You know, and so uh, Nehemiah, when he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And he did it. He had a, and you know what we call that? A burden. When we have a burden for something, we do it. We make sure it happens. Right? If we have a burden for th this such thing, we're going to make sure that we do it no matter what the cost. It's going to happen. Or a, a yearning may it may may be a good uh, a word for it, a desire. You know, brother Calvin has a desire to catch bass. I have a desire to catch bass, and so we we make sure we take time to go and try to catch the bass. Right, the desire we have. I have several desires that I like to do. I like to hunt. I like to do certain things. And so I make sure that those desires that I have, that I try to make sure I do those things. And I also have a burden for bait town. That's why I go out. That's why we have a scheduled time at the Gospel Baptist Church to go out. And one thing I know is if I have a burden for them, I'm going to make sure that I do it. Nehemiah had a burden for his city, to protect his city, so he, put, he said, I'm going to build a wall. And now that the wall is built minus uh, a doors on the gate, the enemies are ready to attack him. See, they know they can't attack him in Jerusalem because he's got help, and so what are they doing? They're trying to withdraw him out. So if they draw him out, he doesn't have anybody else, just himself. And so with Nehemiah's burden, uh, building the wall, we see what uh, all the folks say. And look at where it said, where when that uh, Sanballat, his servant of, to, of uh, these folks, brought a letter to Nehemiah, a written letter. Now that means something, right? A written letter. 
And so he brings a written letter. Verse 6 it says, Wherein was written, it is reported among the heathen, and, and Gashbu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest a wall, that thou mayest be their king according to these words. So what it's saying here, Nehemiah, is the only reason you built the wall is because you want to be king, and that you're going to lead a rebellion. He said, he, he, he even did that, he's fashioning that. Gashbu also said these things. He said, it's written, this is what you're doing. And I love Nehemiah's response. Then said I him saying, there are no such things. He says, he says, he says come on, come to, come to the point of Ono. Come out here, meet us, because this is what's, you know, we think this is what's going to happen. And in verse 3, he says, and I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work. I'll underline that. Any time that we are doing work for the Lord, it is a great work. Whether it's cleaning the, the auditorium or this building, whether it's cleaning the, the fellowship hall, the school bathrooms, it is a great work. And let me tell you, I am thankful that Miss Brenda has taken upon herself to clean those bathrooms and the those over there, because that's a great work. It takes us. It takes the stress off of me. Because let me tell you, it's not not. It's not good when walking in there and seeing everything piled up because nothing's happened to it. Listen, this place right here that we assemble, that we have these building this property, we should take care of this property because it's a great work. And if something happens to this property, guess whose testimony is shot? Ours. Garth Road Baptist Church is a great work. Nehemiah says, I cannot come down to oh no. I am doing a great work. And I will say this every single time. If somebody gets off that wall, you know what's, uh, what's at stake? Someone goes out into eternity. Listen, if when you or I come off the wall, this great work that we are set forth to do, something there is going to happen that we need people that are going to go off into eternity without salvation. Think about it. We come off the wall, there's going to be something that happens. You and I stop this work. We come off the wall. Someone's going out into eternity without Christ. Listen, moms. Dad, you come off this wall, something's going to happen to your children. The enemy's going to get to your children. You come off the wall, dads, husbands, someone's going to get to your family. Remember when Adam came off the wall, what happened with Eve? The serpent came in. He really didn't come off the wall, so to speak, but he threw Eve under the bus. Let Satan do that to her. He heard the word of God. He heard God say it to him. And he did nothing. We come off the wall, something's going to happen. Listen, we come off the wall, there's going to be chains on this door. We come off the wall, there's going to be consequences. I cannot come down. Too many Christians have come off that wall. We've had too many Christians from this church come off the wall. You go off the road the church and pay is paying the price for it. Nehemiah comes off the wall and goes, meets Sanballat. His life is done. They're going to kill him. And if they can kill him, then guess what happens to the rest of them? See, there's a, there's a reason you don't tear down your pastor. You may not agree with everything that is said, but you don't tear him down. He's God's man here at Garth Road Baptist Church. Nehemiah was God's man building that wall. 
He knew he had a responsibility. God gave him that burden. God gave our pastor the burden for Garth Road Baptist Church. Now, I'm not saying this just to uplift the pastor, but I'm showing you the principle from the Word of God that our pastor, he's not going to come off the wall. I'm not going to come off the wall. But although, even though Nehemiah is the leader, he also had help, right? He had people with him to build that wall. Well, from Baptist Church, you're here to build the wall. You're here to do the great work. Whether it's cleaning a toilet, whether it's teaching in Lighthouse Baptist Academy, whether it's vacuuming, whether it's going soul winning, or making cold calls, or whatever it may be, going doing new moves, you have a great work. Listen, I'll tell you what, Miss Ruth, I don't want to go back to CDs. I don't. You're doing a great work. If any one of us comes off the wall, our poor Baptist church pay the price. They send that letter to him, to this man. So this, is what's, this is what's going on, Nehemiah. We, this is what we fabricated, really, is what I should say. We fabricated this. Because the enemy's going to lie to you. You don't need to do this. You don't need to go so when they got enough people. Yeah, four people is enough. Oh, you don't need to do this. You, you, could, you, you, you need to stay home and take care of this. Or you need to go stay at home. Listen, you need to go to work because you have these bills coming on and you've accru- uh, accrued this debt because you went out and used your credit card and you need to stay at work and do this. You don't need to be doing this stuff for the church. And you think I'm lying? That's what the enemy does. He lies to you, lies to me, and sometimes we buy into it hook, line, and secret. Nehemiah said that these things what you're saying are not so. He said, We feared when you said that our hands were going were gonna to weaken. He said, well, you know, we feared it. And he, and then, then he says, therefore, O oh God, what does he say? What's his prayer? Strengthen my hand. Don't let your hand grow weak. Well, what do you mean? I, 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 I'm not out there doing physical labor for that. You know, the church, the building is built. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is this here. Don't let your hands be weakened. Strengthen your hands. And the only way we get strength is in this book. Listen, you want to be a weak Christian? Stay out of the book. You want to let Satan, you want to let Satan win in your family? Stay out of the book. You want to let uh, uh, Satan take your children from you and uh, give them to the world? Stay out of the book. You want a strong family? Get in the book. You want a strong relationship with your Savior? Get in the book. Oh, God, strengthen my hand. Because God called God the church for doing a great work. And if it fails, it's our fault. Satan wants to grow up his church to succeed. If he did, we'd have every person in Bay County. We haven't succeeded yet. We're still here. We still have a great work. My hope and prayer is that Garth Road Baptist Church will believe that they are doing it. Not just a couple of us, but all of us. If we get serious about this thing we call Christianity, we get serious about this thing we call a relationship with our Savior, the 
too many of us are caught off with everything else that's going on in the world. Whether it's politics, whether it's money, whatever it may be. Hunting, fishing, sports. J.J. Watt's birthday, by the way. We're doing a great work. Does Baytown know we're doing a great work? What church are you from? That's a good indication we're not succeeding. Is that a new church? No, we've been around for about 50-something years. Where are y'all at? I said, I'm, oh, you're on, you're on Garth Road, right? Well, yeah, that's the name of our church. You, you, you got that part right. If we're not, if we're not moving forward, and we're standing still, we're not doing what God has asked us to do. We've got to move forward. We've got to progress. Souls are at stake. What I mean, souls are at stake. I mean, Listen, I love each and every single one of you. Maybe minus Brother Roy. I love Brother Roy. And the reason is because Mr. B didn't make them scrumptious egg rolls. You know, until we get serious about this, that we about this great work, we're not going to succeed. We won't succeed. Don't you want to hear, well done, when you meet your Savior? You want to hear the Father say, well done, I do. It's not going to happen if you stay on this. It's temptation. When we stay out of this book, temptation is stronger than we are. Proof's in the pudding. I know. It's in there. And you know it too. Your life may be a wreck. It's like everything's going wrong. The proof is in the proof. Because the temptation is stronger than your relationship is. I love my wife, right? I love my wife. That's better. I do. I love my wife. Because I love her, I'm not going to go do something with some other woman. I love my God. Garth Road Baptist Church, we're doing a great work. Just like Nehemiah said, he was doing. It's time to put foot to our mouth in. Not open mouth and insert foot, but putting, not only talk it, but walk it. Even our society is doing everything it can to kick us out. And if we don't strengthen our hands, it's going to get It's almost 7 o'clock. It's about time to get down with it. No. Listen, if the work of God is, a gra- is great, then why have you stopped? If you love the Garth Road Baptist Church, then why did you stop doing the ministry? Why did you stop giving? Not saying no is always a possibility. So when we say we're going to be here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, we're providing. 
word is going to ask you to stay over. Something's going to ask you. And if you don't say no, God is out there. Not saying no is always a possibility. Yeah. And you might say, no, I can't come down. Are you on the verge of coming down from that wall? Are you on the verge of giving up the fight? Because you see everything around you is crumbling. Your life is in shambles. And ask God to strengthen you. If you do, be prepared if you will. Because when you're asking God to strengthen your hands for the work, you're not asking him you don't have because you ask for yes. The asking for material things, possession, is asking for yes. And it's for selfish reasons. It's asking him to strengthen the hand of the mind. asking for strength to do good. But first, you have to do good. You have to give. You have to have that relationship. Miss Doris, is a one is a one sided relationship a good relationship? If Brother Doug says, "You know what? I I'm just not going to participate in this marriage," that happens. I'm not saying Brother Doug does it. I know Brother Doug loves. He does everything he can for her. But there are people who, there are marriages out here that are one-sided. <clears throat> you know, one-sided relationship will not last. A one-sided relationship with us and us and will not last. Because, listen, that, that one-sided is his side. We're the one that's giving up. He says there's a lot of men and a lot of women who've given up on their relationship, their marriage, and they fall apart. He says, don't let your relationship fall apart with the Lord. Strengthen your hand so that you can do the work of God. Father, as we conclude tonight, Lord, Garth Road Baptist Church is doing a great work. Father, it may not seem great because there's a few of us that are doing the work. Father, but I believe that Garth Road Baptist Church is worth fighting for. Father, I believe my relationship with you is worth fighting for. Lord, I'm asking you to strengthen my hand to do the work. Lord, and I ask, and Lord, I pray that all these folks in here in this room, those that are watching, Lord, will ask for you to strengthen their hands also. Father, I don't know what each individual is going through. Lord, I don't know what trials or tribulations or, or valleys that they're in. Father, but you do. And you know how to strengthen their hands. What it to be. Father, I ask you to do so. Father, as we have the invitation and the piano and story to the gospel play, Father, if we've done anything that has torn our relationship or that we have done or that has gotten us up front, we're not doing the work anymore. But I pray each individual will search their heart that they have found a good from the altar. Lord, if you're ready for the spring revival, and I'm asking you to speak to me individually. Lord, as a Christian, also as a, as a husband, I believe my family. Lord, please speak to your people. For these things I ask, Christ in me. Amen. As the piano gets to play and the altar is open.